Hello and welcome to Introduction on Cloud Computing and Azure which is Microsoft's Cloud Computing Platform. I am Siddhesh. I have more than a decade of experience working as a full stack developer and trainer and today we are going to look at introductory session on Cloud Computing and Azure. Today we are going to learn about what is cloud computing and the benefits of it. We will understand the key terminology involved in cloud computing. There are three different types of cloud model, public, private and hybrid. We will try to understand them. And also we will look at the different types of cloud services such as infrastructure as a service or IR, platform as a service or PaaS and software as a service or SaaS. Finally, we will take a look at what is Azure and we will walk through Azure portal. Let's start with cloud computing. Cloud computing is the delivery of computing services including servers, it could be Windows Server, Linux Server, storage wherein you can store your data in files or databases. Networking allows us to securely connect our on-premise data center uh, resources or services or applications. As an organization, you might have your applications or software in an on-premise data center. Using secure network, you can connect to uh, resources or services in the cloud and communicate. Cloud computing services also include ready-made software, which we'll look at in a later session. And also analytics and intelligence services are also provided over the internet. And cloud computing uh, provides flexible resources and economies of scale. You can scale the resources as per the demand or as per the need. One very good important aspect of cloud computing is you only pay for the services that you use for that particular time period only. This helps you lower your operating cost and also allows you to run your infrastructure more efficiently and also scale up or scale down as per the changes in the business needs. These are some of the cloud providers available today. Azure is a cloud from Microsoft. Amazon Web Services is from Amazon. Google Cloud Platform is from Google. Similarly, Alibaba has their own cloud platform and so on. Here are some of the benefits of cloud computing. First and foremost is the cost. You don't need to invest upfront for the IT infrastructure or the resources. The upfront capital expense is totally eliminated by cloud computing. You only pay for the resources that you need on demand and as per the need. You can provision or deprovision the services or resources. Global scale cloud computing delivers the right amount of IT resources right when they are needed and from the right geographic location. Speed cloud computing resources can be provisioned or deprovisioned in a matter of minutes via a self-service portals and on demand as per the need. This gives businesses flexibility and takes the pressure off capacity planning. Next is productivity. If you have your on-premise data center of your organization that requires hardware setup, procuring the hardware, software patching and other time-consuming IT management tasks. 
Cloud computing removes the need for many of such tasks so that your IT team can focus on important business code. Next is performance. Cloud providers already have the fast and efficient computing hardware in place or the infrastructure in place. This helps us or the or users reduce the network latency for applications and connectivity and also greater economies of scale. Next is reliability. Cloud computing provides services such as data backup and disaster recovery which helps to continue your business in an easier and less expensive manner. The data can also be mirrored at multiple redundant locations or sites on the cloud provider's network to provide high availability, fault tolerance and disaster recovery. Last but not the least is security. Cloud computing provides policies, procedures, technologies and controls all in place to help to protect your data, applications and infrastructure from any potential threats. Now let us take a look at key concepts involved in cloud computing world. First is high availability. It is the operational uptime of a service over a period of time. Azure as well as other cloud computing providers provide SLA that is service level agreement for every service or resource in the cloud to give you information in advance about the operational uptime of service. You can achieve it via redundancy as well as replication of your service or resources across locations or sites. Next is fault tolerance. It is the ability of service to continue operating even in the event of a failure of some or all of its components. Again, fault tolerance can be achieved via redundancy and replication. Next is a similar term uh, is disaster recovery. Disaster recovery defines a set of policies or procedures to enable recovery or continuation of a service following a natural or user induced disaster or failure. Disaster recovery can be achieved via implementing failover in case of a failure or disaster to a secondary location. For change in workload, that is the number of users or requests, there are two concepts involved. One is scalability and another is elasticity. Scalability is the ability of the service to process increase in load by either scaling up, that is vertical scaling or scale, scaling out, that is horizontal scale. Scaling up or vertical scaling can be achieved by adding additional capacity to a service or a resource. For example, if I have a virtual machine, I can increase the capacity of that virtual machine by adding RAM, disk space, CPU and so on. Scaling out or horizontal scaling can be achieved by adding additional resources. For example, if I have a virtual machine, uh, horizontal scaling can be achieved by adding extra virtual machines uh, of the same type. Global reach. You can provision and deploy your services or resources in a cloud computing environment in different geographic locations. For example, if you have customers in US, you can deploy your services or resources in the US region itself. Similarly, this also helps us achieve lower latency 
for the connectivity as well as usage of the applications deployed on cloud this helps us achieve customer latency capabilities next is agility it refers to ability to rapidly develop test and launch software applications that drive business growth uh, you can provision resources on demand and as per the need similarly you can deprovision the resources also uh, this also helps uh, in a predictive cost considerations for example in advance even when you are, are going to deploy a service or an application cloud computing platform will give you indication of uh, the predicted cost for the particular service or resource last but not least security cloud computing uh, environment provides policies procedures and controls in place to help protect your data applications and infrastructures from any potential threats another term that you will encounter is economies of scale it is the ability to reduce cost and gain efficiency when operating at a very large scale in terms of economies of scale there are two terms involved one is capital expenditure or capex another is operational expenditure or opex if you want to have your on premise data center you will have to spend on the infrastructure of front at the same time you as a organization will be responsible for the maintenance security access and of the infrastructure application data have end to end right so there is a high upfront cost involved the value of investment reduces over time operational expenditure talks about spending on services or products or resources only when they are needed you can provision the services for a time period and you will pay a only when you are using that service for the time period this model is known as pay as you use there is no upfront cost in what here so cloud computing platforms help you reduce your capital expenditure and move towards operational expenditure so all cloud computing platforms are consumption based models there is no upfront cost involved no need to purchase provision or even manage and maintain the costly infrastructure in your on premise data center this gives you ability to pay for additional resources or scale as per your business need you can also stop paying for the resources by deprovisioning them whenever they are no longer needed now let us take a look at different types of cloud model first one is public cloud it is owned by the cloud services or hosting provider for example azure is a public cloud which is owned by microsoft it is not only owned the, it is it is the responsibility of the hosting provider for the entire maintenance of the infrastructure it provides resources and services to multiple organizations and users and you can access it securely on network connection uh, typically over the internet next is private cloud it is owned and operated by the organization that uses the cloud resources so you will have your on premise data center so you can create your cloud environment in your own data center you can also have a self service access to the compute resources in that private cloud 
to your users within the organization. The organization is fully responsible for the maintenance and the operations of the services they provide. The third one is a combination of public and private cloud. It is known as hybrid cloud. It allows applications to run in the most appropriate location as per the need. For example, you might have a mainframe uh, application which requires mainframe kind of infrastructure. In which scenario you will run it on your on-premise data center in your private cloud. And if it's a web application, internet facing web application running uh, using latest technology, then you can easily deploy it on public cloud by making use of pay as you use model and uh, saving on your capex so it will depend on what kind of application and infrastructure you need depending on that you will choose one of this model here is a side by side comparison of the cloud models public cloud there is no capital expenditure upfront required and even if you want to scale up you can uh, achieve it in a matter of minutes rather than spending for too much cost as well as too much time to in the procurement installation and maintenance applications can be quickly provisioned whenever there is a need business need or deprovision whenever they are not required and you only pay for what you use for that particular time period private cloud uh, organizations have complete control over the infrastructure resources and the organization is fully responsible for the maintenance and the operations of the uh, services including security how hybrid cloud is the most flexible of the three and organization can de determine where to run their application as per the need of that application uh, organizations have control over security compliance and also legal requirements now let us take a look at different types of cloud services here is a shared responsibility model which describes control that you as an organization have and what resources you can manage and what resources cloud provider can manage the boxes in green will be managed by you as an organization whereas boxes in blue will be managed by the cloud provider and cloud provider will be fully responsible for it on the leftmost side we see on-premise data center which is a private cloud in which organization will have to manage the compute networking and storage resources which is the complete IT hardware as well as infrastructure additionally organization will also have control full control over the resources plus the management man, maintenance and so on of the operating system patching application deployment data management access control as well as security of the resources in case of public cloud we have three service models first one is infrastructure as a service in which the cloud provider will manage the underlying IT infrastructure including compute networking and storage services and you as an organization can create virtual machines install the operating system as per the requirement deploy your applications manage your data access and security as we move towards the right another is platform as a service in which in addition to the underlying IT infrastructure the cloud provider will also manage the underlying virtual machine operating system and the runtime that is required to run your application so you as an organization can quickly deploy the applications 
and give to users for testing as well as you have control over data access and security of the data and the application itself the rightmost side we have software as a service in which accept data and access all other task will be performed or managed by the cloud provider it itself so as we move towards the right hand side we see that organization have less control over the resources or infrastructure however the advantage is that it has less capex or capital expenditure or the upfront investment that you need to make on the resources again infrastructure as a service is the most basic cloud computing service here organization is going to rent the servers storage disk drives virtual machines uh, the network for access or communication operating system from a cloud provider using a pay as you go model and under ias you can provision and manage computing infrastructure instantly in a matter of minutes over the internet next is platform as a service or pass here the cloud provider will provide the infrastructure for you such that you can directly deploy the application and give it to users for usage or testing so this helps you create applications quickly without bothering about the underlying infrastructure the underlying infrastructure will be managed by the cloud provider so you can focus on your application software as a service or saas applications are centrally hosted and managed applications for the end users by the cloud provider users can directly connect and use the application over the internet an example of a saas application or saas service is microsoft office 365 email services such as gmail and so on you have the least control over the infrastructure however you can use pay as you go a subscription based model to use saas services here is a side by side comparison of all three cloud services infrastructure as a service is the most flex uh, flexible cloud service here you can configure manage and you have control over the hardware for your application however it is also costly next is pass or platform as a service here the cloud provider is going to manage the platform or the infrastructure required and you can focus solely on the application development then we have saas software as a service here you just have to subscribe to that service and need not be bothered about management of any of the resources generally we have subscription models and you will use pay as you go pricing model so this brings us to azure which is a cloud computing service from microsoft in order to access and interact with azure resources we can use azure portal which we'll see shortly in order to use azure portal or access azure portal you will need to create an account and buy a subscription good news is that we can have a free trial subscription for 30 days to start with which gives you credit of $200 so that you can play around and learn microsoft azure azure.microsoft.com is a one stop website which you can visit to get more information about different services documentation pricing related information with respect to azure to start working with azure you can create a free account which is valid for 30 days and you also get 
$200 credit and there are many free services that you can play around with and learn also. If you scroll down, you can get all the categories of the services which are available on Azure. There are more than 200 services available. Under Compute, we have Virtual Machine, SQL Server and other services. Under Containers, we have App Service, Azure Function, Kubernetes Service and so on to work with container related services. So, in order to get started, you can click on start free link here, create an account. Once you create an account, you can go to portal.azure.com, which is a Azure portal to work with Azure related services. On the home page, you will see a button to create resources of different types. We can create virtual machine, SQL databases and so on. Let me go to dashboard. On the left hand side, you will see links or a menu for dashboard services as well as some favorite blades. These are known as blades. If I go to dashboard, it lists all the resources that I have created for this subscription. And I can also go to all services. This is going to display all the services under particular categories. For example, if I click on compute, I have services to create virtual machine, function app, app services and so on. Similarly, then you can browse to a particular category to access a particular service. On the top, we have search bar wherein you can search for, for example, virtual machine and all the services will be listed in this section. All the resources that you have created with this particular search keyword will be listed under resources. Marketplace provides templates to create or provision resources. You can also get document related documentation. There are tons of tutorials, help available for a particular service on Azure and so on. Then we have Cloud Shell. If I click on it, it is going to open a terminal and the from the portal I can work with the services from the UI whereas terminal allows me to provide either PowerShell or bash commands to interact with the services on Azure. For now let me close this. Then we have directory and subscription information of the current subscription. Of course, we are not going to deep dive into each of the keywords that we are encountering here. We will look at them when we go to the Azure course. Next is notifications. Let's say I provision a virtual machine or create a resource or a subscribe to a service then the status and all the notifications will be listed here. Next is settings under which you can change the look and feel of the portal. Next is help. You can also contact Microsoft support using the help and support link here. Also there is information about keyboard shortcuts. You can use this to interact with Azure portal. Finally, we have link to give feedback to Microsoft. Whatever is your good or bad experience, you can con always give feedback. Similarly, I can go to favorites blade. Let's say virtual machine. It is going to list 
if there are any created virtual machines you can always add a virtual machine from this virtual machine play you can also start stop and take other actions on the particular resource using such plates so today we learned what is a cloud computing its advantages or benefits we learned and understood the key terminology involved in cloud computing we looked at three different types of cloud models public private hybrid and the difference among them we also looked at three different types of cloud services infrastructure as a service platform as a service software as a service and the difference among them lastly we looked at what is azure and we also walked through azure portal on a high level i hope you enjoyed the video and learned something about cloud computing and azure i hope you subscribe to the azure course and i will see you in the course